Thanks for tuning in. This is Janine from Lupus Health Shop and our Lupus Life Hacks series is all about easy ways to continue to live the life that you deserve even with lupus. Part of that's gonna be some easy lifestyle changes. But before I tell you all my two amazing ways to prevent heat intolerance for the rest of the summer, first we have to figure out why it's happening. talking about symptoms of heat intolerance or heat exhaustion. Um, usually whenever I go outside I, I get super nervous because I don't know if I'm gonna get really nauseous, if I'm gonna ha get lightheaded, have a migraine, if my joints start to swell or if I get I start to get a red rash. Um, I'll start to like my skin will turn red, I'll get raised bumps and sometimes it'll be itchy, sometimes it won't. Um, it really just depends but what I do know is that it's definitely from the sun and I still want to enjoy it. So I've figured out a couple of ways to help me enjoy the outside. Whether you're going for a walk with your friends or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, whether you're having a barbecue and you're going to be outside for a long time, um, these are all easy ways that we can incorporate these lifestyle changes. five typical symptoms that occur. Your ankles could swell, uh, your knees can swell, you could have a red rash on your face or it can be on your arms, your stomach. It doesn't necessarily have to be the typical butterfly rash. Often you're going to feel nauseous, lightheaded, um, you'll feel very dehydrated. So there's not like an actual you know it doesn't need time really after, after one hour being out in the sun if you are feeling these symptoms, then it's heat exhaustion. It doesn't have to be a specific time. Uh, if you're out in the sun, something's happening, that's the, that's the issue. Oh, is that sometimes there are other triggers. It's not just lupus. So for example, your medications that you're on, if you're taking methotrexate, Plaquenil, any non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs, if you're taking tricyclic antidepressants, um, antihistamines, antibiotics, so there's lots of different things that could be going on. And if you are on those medications, I would still take them. However, there are going to be some awesome solutions that I'm going to tell you. Sometimes it happens because you have an undiagnosed thyroid condition. That means that you either have hypothyroid, hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Or you can have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune condition. Either way, it's important to get your thyroid checked out. And I'm gonna put a link below um, of, some, of a blog that you should definitely check out in regards to thyroid issues. Even after you address that, you still need to take these precautions that I'm going to tell you but this will help alleviate some of your symptoms once you get a plan of attack if it's the thyroid that's triggering this. Second would be fibromyalgia. That's another common syndrome that people with lupus have. Fibromyalgia sufferers will have a lot of flare-ups usually when the weather is warmer. It could trigger the sensitivity that you're feeling. It could trigger fatigue, fibro fog. It could definitely trigger the heat intolerance as well. What's the science behind heat intolerance? Well, basically, there's a couple of options as well. So it's, it's never an easy one to answer, but I have a few good ones that you might it might fit for you. The first, sometimes heat intolerance is caused by poor circulation or blood flow, um, lessening the ability to sweat. So if you're not sweating, you're not releasing. You, your, your body regulates the temperature because of sweating by by you sweating. So if you're not sweating, you're not getting rid of the heat. It's, it's basically building up inside of you. Another time is when doctors, they'll suggest that like if you have an increase in temperature, it's going to cause the nerves to conduct electrical signals. It causes um, the electrical signals 
that are in your nerves to, to be conducted less efficiently. Thing is basically the messages are slower bringing to the spinal cord, so the communication is not as clear. And that's a chronic problem that we have already because of lupus and the chronic inflammation. So this is just another thing I guess to add to it, but it's totally okay because we're gonna solve the problem and we're gonna try to prevent that. Oftentimes, you know, I'm sure you've heard that people with lupus or maybe you experience it yourself, that UVB, uh, UVB rays are what attacks our skin and it makes us feel really hot, it makes us feel um, tired, it hurts, it burns our skin. And that is because the rays are actually going to our skin cells and it, the, our immune system is attacking it because it's triggering white blood cells to come and attack and, and destroy your skin. So when you have inflammation and a rash, that could actually be why. Another reason is the sun can also mess up the natural cell um, apoptosis process. And apoptosis means your cells um, erupt or they die. So when the sun comes in and it's triggering your cells to die prematurely, that's because that's actually gonna um, kind of what triggers the problem because they're dying before they're supposed to. So it messes up the natural process within your body. One of my biggest problems was that I would go out and I'd go for a walk or maybe I'd go on the river and want to be by the water and I would get so dehydrated. I'd feel so thirsty, I'd feel lightheaded, I'd feel tired and it was just, I would get so nauseous and make me really uncomfortable. So it's really important to prepare before you go out. Drink your electrolytes, bring something with you so that you're always drinking water and make sure that it has a nice balance of potassium, sodium, magnesium. And those are the potassium and sodium, so salt and potassium, right? Those are um, what helps keep your cells balanced. They're flowing in and out, basically. And from there, you're, when you're out in the sun and it's causing too much dehydration too fast, everything's flowing out, nothing's coming in. So it's really important to find something that is natural, that doesn't have any artificial flavors, colors, or um, any, any sugars or preservatives. So one of my go-to would be coconut water. Coconut water, I know you're probably thinking it tastes horrible, but it's it does take a little bit of time to find a good company. Because coconut water is so popular, it's important to, to find a company that is using young coconuts, that doesn't have any preservatives, and that's refrigerated. Those are all signs that it's gonna be a well-made product. If you're not into the coconut water, I would go with an electrolyte powder and that way you can just carry a little to-go packet and just throw it in your water whenever you're ready to drink. A good one that I like um, is Go Ultima or Noon. Um, both of them are pretty good. They don't have any food colorings, they don't have any preservatives, and they have a pretty good ratio of salt, you know, magnesium, potassium. Whenever I drink those, um, I feel a thousand times better, but the key is to do it before you go outside. And lastly, my number one find of 2019 is definitely hands down the Undercool Vest. This vest has been a life-changing product for me. I cannot rave enough. It, is, it's basically you put it on under your clothes and it has cooling packs, not ice packs. And that's key to making it work so much better. Because it's not an ice pack, it's not gonna burn your skin, it's not gonna make you feel really cold. Gradual, it has a very nice gradual soothing effect. And so it cools you down at a slow and at a moderate pace. It lasts up to two hours. And even there's actually a video, um, I did an unboxing of this product. So you can get the full details by clicking on the video above for the cooling vest and any of the products on Lupus Health Shop. Um, we do take HSA and FSA debit cards and for the cooling vest specifically, it's considered a DME. That means um, you can call your insurance and they'll pay for it in full, especially because it's under the $500 limit of a pre-authorization, which means if, you're if you let your doctor know that it's something that you need, um, they can write a note and contact your insurance and they should be able to purchase it. What are some of the symptoms that you experience when you have heat exhaustion? Or what have you found that has, how has it changed your life so much? I'd love to hear it below and let's get this conversation started. 
It's something that we really struggle with and I want us to struggle less. So let me know below what you've been doing and if you're gonna try any of the stuff I've, I've suggested, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Thumbs if you liked the video, subs if you loved it. Don't forget to share our videos so that you can help other warriors have fun in the sun.